a few months ago, I just stumbled upon this picture. To most people, this looks like yet another one of the rare green gas giants found in the game. But something just seems off about it, right? It's too green. Well, maybe we just found a new variant. Well, then I looked at this picture. An icy body, bathed in neon green light. This is just unusual. However, apparently it is nothing new. This system was discovered by Commander Fossils, who alerted me to this discovery. I've heard of this bug many years ago, but I've never given it much thought. It was strange, an eerie green glow came from a star that itself isn't green. So obviously that wasn't a green gas giant we saw earlier. There is something more going on here. But the hue and saturation of the green color is pretty similar to the green gas giants. Or just perhaps it was a bug with certain graphics cards. Well, you all know how much I like researching the bazaar, so naturally I had to investigate. As I was already headed in that direction, I figured I'd take a detour and look. And what I found utterly confused me and raised more questions than I had answers for, and you're about to see why. This is Strange Temperatures. Let's get to it. What I immediately noticed is an exotic bright light that I don't think I've ever seen in hyperspace before. Almost like approaching a super bright brown dwarf star. Lots of thoughts raced through my head, but then I saw this. This star isn't glowing. Well, not as they usually do. But there, my ship's bow is that bright pink color we saw seconds ago. This star seems dim. Like the only thing that's there is the texture of the star's surface, and nothing else. Yep, you can see on my ship there, the, uh, the star is casting a pink color. But as we fly away, that pink suddenly disappears and turns white. And then... green. Fascinating. I decided to check the system map to see what it looks like, but it seems normal. And yeah, that gas giant definitely wasn't a GGG. Randomly, I happened to look at the spectral types of the stars to the left here. TTS-9. Hmm. Here is where I become very confused. For those who don't know, the temperature number, number 9 in this instance, denotes the average surface temperature of our star within its class. All the stars in the game, save for black holes and neutron stars, have undisplayed. 9 means the star is on the colder side, and the lower the number, the hotter its temperature, 0 being the hottest. Why this confused me is that there are definitely Titori stars colder than this, yet somehow this star wields number 9. I go and look at its surface temperature and see something odd to me again. 5200.00 Kelvin. To me, that 00, .00 had to mean something. What other physical parameters would mess with the brightness of a star other than a surface temperature? Well, you could argue radius, but I'm talking about the color of light emitted. My thought here was perhaps this happened to every Titori star with this exact surface temperature. The way I saw it, there was only one way to find out. Visit another one. Luckily for me, I was within the Gothic Exclusion Cross, so prototype stars were abounds. Searching Spanch, I found another Titari star sharing the same surface temp not too far away. Again, upon entering hyperspace, the intense pink light appeared. At this point, I knew I was onto something. And the same dim star showed up, also having 5200.00 Kelvin as a surface temperature. To ensure I wasn't just crazy, I visited one more just to be sure, and yes, it seemed all Titori stars with a surface temperature of 5200.00 Kelvin were bugged. So now we see that they show pink light up close, then transitioning from pink to white, then immediately to green, which is what shows up in the FSS. Exploring around these systems was very weird. All planets, despite not being lit by a star that isn't actually glowing, reflects a dim green hue. Even the atmospheres of these planets backscatter green light, regardless of their composition. I wanted to see what the star and sky would look like within a landable atmosphere. It turns out, since technically there isn't any light, the atmosphere is not lit. But strangely, you can see that the star sprite in the sky appears green instead of white, and the light source seems to be offset and coming from a different direction as seen on the ground here. This I haven't found an explanation for. So that's it, right? All the bug green stars have a temp of 5200.00 Kelvin. What about, let's say, 5201.00 Kelvin? Nope, these appear lit. 
and the same for 5199 Kelvin too. So, all right, case closed. Honestly, I wish it just ended there, but no. Lunamoth is probably the POI those of you who know of this are familiar with. Submitted to the GMP in 2021, this system too had the strange green glow on the planet. In my research, I browsed the star information in ADSM to see if it too was a Titori star at 5200.00 Kelvin. Oh. I was just sent back to the drawing board, as there are, of course, more temperatures that cause this phenomena for some reason. I need to visit one for myself, and seeing that this one was all the way out in the normal expanse, I went to Spanch again and instead searched for Titori stars near me with a 7500 Kelvin surface temperature. At the time of recording, there are only 24 known with the surface temperature of 7500 Kelvin exactly. Unfortunately, the closest one to me was not the primary star in the system, so it wouldn't cast a pink glow in hyperspace. I arrived from the system and checked out the system map, again seeing our target Titori also had a temperature number of 9. So I set off on the quick 7000 light second trip over to the binary pair, and what I saw was just awesome. These stars you see before you are around the same distance away from me. To your right is a B-type star, and to your left are bug Titori. The B-type was a light source here, so I was not able to see the pink-green light from the other. With the odd exposure of the camera, the star appeared totally dark. It was the same as before, it just wasn't lit, with only the texture of the surface of the star being there, along with a few flares. It was also here that I noticed something that I had overlooked before. As previously mentioned, number 9 was the one we were looking for on our Titori stars. But when I searched down 1 degree Kelvin to see if it was still bugged, something else changed. The temperature number reset back to zero. Both 5199 Kelvin and 7499 Kelvin belong to the class group below the one to the bug temp, both of them being the highest in their class, shown by the zero. This introduced me to something that the game does to protostars that I had not known at the time. Once the surface temperature reaches a certain threshold, the temperature number cycles back over to 9 and goes to the numbers again. This means that multiple Titori stars with wildly different temperatures could share the exact same spectrotype, temperature number, and all. And it just so happens that where this bug happens is on the first temperature of this new class group when it cycles over back to 9 again. Now all I had to do is look through all the temps and find where the transitions were from 0 to 9 and look at those stars to see if they were bugged or not. I began making a spreadsheet where I kept track of where the shifts were. I quickly found out that they matched the temperatures of their main sequence counterparts. So for example, the G-spectral class would have the coldest temperature at 5200 Kelvin and the highest at 5999 Kelvin, or at 6000, it would then be classed as an F-type. I jumped to each of the temperatures that served as the lower bound of their classes. Interestingly, and to my misfortune, not all of them were bugged. And I just can't explain why. My theory was maybe half right? Or maybe they went by a different pattern and it just so happens that some fell on the borderline of two different class groups. Then, going one step up the 7500 transition, I found another one. Now, we had two steps in a row where they were bugged. Beyond 10,000, the next step was 33,000 Kelvin, and no tutorials are discovered yet that go that high. And really, that was my one detriment to looking for and finding patterns here. The higher in temperature I went, the less and less of a sample size I got for a certain temperature. Some I just couldn't have an answer to, as none have been discovered with a certain temperature that I was looking for. And that is where my search ultimately had to come to a stop, with no concrete pattern between them and again no real explanation behind why they appear as they do, I was at a loss. But still, I had shed some light on where these bugs occur and how we can reliably expect protostars with these temperatures to be this way. I also discovered that herbic stars are also bugged at 5200 Kelvin, but are only bugged at that temperature as they do not go high enough to reach the next transition at 7500 Kelvin. A few weeks after, there was a GEC entry that was submitted regarding the bug that just made no sense to me. This system shared the usual green FSS pictures on both gas giants and icy bodies, the same as the first one shown in this video. 
However, what was weird here was the temperature of the main star, as well as its temperature number. Not only does this star have a different temperature than the ones I had found already at 2400 Kelvin, but it is not at the lower bounds of its class group at 7, or even its temperature number. As seen here, the lower bound of the temperature number 7 is 60 Kelvin below what the star's is at 2340. And moving back over to the main table, the lower bounds for its class group is 2000, nowhere near 2400. So, yeah, all I can really do without looking at every single double zero temperature and exhausting myself is just to wait for the next report with a new temperature. Now we are at the present time, and for now, this is all we know. These four temperatures are the ones to look out for if you want to visit a green bug star for yourself. After all that concluded, what I found during my research got me thinking. In the game, as well as real life, a star's temperature decides what color its surface will look like to our eyes. In Elite, these specific strange temperatures is what changes the star's color to the green and pink color we see. But where have I seen those color combinations before in the game? Well, obviously, they're on your screen right now. The green gas giants. No one knew how or why they'd become bug like this, just that they do. Surface so temp? Well, it's all over the place. Star type? Well, that too. As I said in my studied green gas giants video, we always thought it was something behind the scenes in the stellar forge that made the planets look the way they do. But seeing how much of a coincidence the same green and pink duo showed up in the stars, I figured I'd revisit the GGGs again to see if I can uncover anything that I might have missed before. One day, I tapped into my EDJP window and looked at the past events list and saw that the surface temperature of a planet I just scanned was given in floating point format. I had only ever known planetary surface temp to be given as a whole number because that's how the system map and EDSM displayed it. Then an idea popped into my head. Surface temperature is also what decides how a gas giant will look, right? For example, how colder class 3 gas giants are blue than as they get hotter they go to the colors such as white, pink, dark brown, etc. I thought maybe, if specific star temps decided if a star is bugged, what if specific planet temps decided if a planet was bugged? With the realization that these temps are given in a floating point format, I decided to dive into my journals to see if my theory held true. It was a shot in the dark, but why not? I found that not only did the game give me the temperature in decimal form, it gave me six significant figures to look at. I got pretty excited. That meant there was far more behind these numbers than meets the eye. So I loaded up one of the journals that I discovered a green gas giant in, the green water giant, and crossed my fingers that I would see something cool. The green water giant had a surface temperature of exactly 158 Kelvin to six significant figures, all zeros. I was thinking no way am I the first to notice this. I then recalled that, strangely, three other green gas giants shared the surface temp of 158, two of them being gas giants with water-based life. Seeing as the surface features of water giants and water-based life giants are similar, the one thing I was hoping for was at least one of them to have a surface temp of 158.000000 Kelvin. And sure enough, the two temperatures matched. My heart was practically racing at this point, as I have apparently figured it out. It was temperature all along, we just weren't looking at it right. I then went through my codex stats in the game that told me the temperatures with decimal points for all GGGs I have scanned, and built another spreadsheet. And yes, the other water-based life giant also had the same temperature. But for the lower temperatures, besides 150 Kelvin, there weren't much of an overlap. But there are more water-based life GGGs, and the next temperature range for them was just as odd. An irregular grouping around the temperature 176.6666, with the last two decimal places varying between them. Then below that is the lost GGG, which seems to just be a hair shy of 217.5 Kelvin. Something weird is happening with that glass, right? Well, let's turn a little further south on the spreadsheet to the hotter planets. Yeah, this gets better. It seems the hotter class 3s are easier to discern a pattern for. See, it might be that they turn green every step of 30 that go up in temperature. Starting from 550, 
you can add 30 and get 580. From there, adding 30 again will get you to 610 and again to 640. It appears that the green class of the gas giant with 670 hasn't been discovered yet, as adding 30 to that yields 700, the hottest class 3 GGG found to date. And as for the only class 4 GGG, it seems suspiciously close to 1150 Kelvin, but not quite. Now what can we do with this information? Well, not much really. We still can't predict exactly where GGGs will generate, that's just the nature of the game. But what we can do now, that we haven't been able to before, besides from scanning for GGG codex alerts, is search for these specific temperatures in data dumps. For example, if someone has already scanned, say, a class 2 green gas giant in a region, then discovered another, but by chance it had the same surface temp and they failed to notice, we could search data dumps for that temperature. And even though it didn't generate a codex event, we still have two instances of a confirmed GGG temperature, and we can go to the system it was discovered to confirm. But that is an edge case, as just scanning two in a region will list the other in that planet's codex stats under the green category. You just gotta look out for it once in a while. The real bonus this finding offers is for the green gas giants with water-based life. As they do not generate a codex entry, we can search data dumps using the temperatures we already know of to see if one has been found that has gone unnoticed. And I tried that, but there's a slight problem. Unfortunately, for temperatures that end in all zeros, the dumps convert them into just whole numbers. This wouldn't be as bad of a problem, except that older data from early in the game, when decimal points just weren't tracked, are also included. For example, if a gas giant had 158.456789 as a temperature, it would be routed down to 158, and that is what would be displayed. This, as well as just bad or faulty data, is also included, which makes searching for these, as well as those class 3 gas giants we went over earlier, a fruitless task. So for now, we know that it's those strange temperatures that trigger the bug to occur. Exactly how this happens, we will never know. That part we will never see. But this is the biggest step into searching for them since we started tracking their codex events. I'm looking forward to the newer ones that are discovered so we can compare known temperatures to it to see if it matches or not. If you wish to view my sorted GGG spreadsheet, I'll leave the link in the description of this video. If you guys have any questions, leave it down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. In the meantime, keep on exploring. Who knows what or where the next bizarre bug will be found. I have been Commander Arcanic. Till next time.